Hey guys, about a year ago, I installed almost 1600 watts of solar on my RV. Today, I'm gonna go over the mistakes I made. So I'm gonna answer your questions as well. But after traveling over 6,000 miles and 30 plus nights, there are definitely some things I wanna change. So stick around to the end. I'm gonna save the best items for last. And I'm trying to give away this equipment. So I'll show you how at the end of the video. Okay guys, so here is the 48 volt battery I have installed. Here is the solar charge controller. It's also the inverter and it's also AC charger. It's kind of got everything built in. This is the main power system. If you want to see a full uh, install of this, then I'll put a link in the description of the video here. Okay, so the first thing I clearly got wrong was mentioning that I can run my air conditioner at night without any sun for around five hours. I definitely got that one wrong. When I was measuring that, I was measuring just the uh, inverter running the air conditioner, but I forgot it had an extra battery that was running the fans and that was actually supplying a lot of power as well. And I don't think I was accounting for the inverter output, but at night with this specific battery, I can run the air conditioner for about two and a half to three hours Three hours would probably be pushing it. So another thing I wanna mention is regarding soft starts and my RV. So regarding soft starts, I took this, AC, this Blue Eddy AC200L around to six different RVs when I was camping and I tried to start air conditioners. This could start four of the six air conditioners. One of the air conditioners was a really small bumper pole and the other air conditioner that this one could start is my air conditioner on my RV. So I think my air conditioner might have a soft start on there. So I'm not a uh, RV air conditioner expert, so I can't say for sure that it has a soft start, but my air conditioner is easier to start than other air conditioners. Okay, another thing I noticed that I would change, or at least I would change when I bought a new RV, is I would not get a dual purpose, dual fuel uh, fridge, one that runs off propane or electricity. Because it has dual fuel, these are super, super inefficient when they run on electricity. So when this is running on electricity, it's using about three and a half times the power of my large house refrigerator. I know nowadays they are building these with a straight 120 volt option, or even better, just a straight 12 volt option. My sister has one of those and it's super, it's way better. Okay, I did add these external 30 amp RV plugs so my friends could plug into my power system when I went camping. And this is probably the number one comment I received saying there's no way you could run three RVs with this power system. Well, if we need to run air conditioners, that is definitely the case. I cannot run three RVs if we're trying to run air conditioners. Now. I, I camp in a lot of cool places. So one of the camps we went on, we went on our family reunion and I did have two other RVs running on this. I did switch our power hungry fridges over to run on propane during that time, but it kept up just fine as long as we weren't running our fridges or our air conditioner. It kept their uh, batteries charged. They could put popcorn in the microwave, but that did okay. Okay, so the next thing I'll think about on my future RV is to not add these solar panels. These panels have been great, except they were a pain in the butt to install. It took me about eight hours to install these. I was talking to another YouTuber, Frugal Repairs, and he installed the Bouge RV 200 watt uh, panels that you can just stick to your roof. It has an adhesive on the other side. Those are more expensive, but he installed them really fast Supposedly, those solar panels have really good bypass diodes, so you can not worry about the shading from your air conditioner. Literally, you just lay, clean your roof, stick them down, and they are light, lighter as well. So regarding wire nuts, I did have someone mention that uh, wire nuts can vibrate loose if you're traveling. And I disregarded that advice, but after we drove down to Mexico, I noticed that this wire nut had come off. Um, a better option would be uh, Wago uh, connectors. If I would have had a bunch of blankets in this closet, uh, that could have started a fire. So that was very good advice. 
This wire nut's probably a little bit too small for this um, size wire. That might have also contributed. I need to fix this still. So one other thing I would change is I got a 30 amp step down converter that was able to run all my 12 volt appliances in my RV because I had a 48 volt battery. That's super efficient. However, I wish I would have got one a little more powerful. Wish I would have got the uh, 40 amp one because raising the jacks up and down, it would do it, but it was struggling just a little bit. Okay, the next subject a lot of people have asked about is the converter box. Now, the first video I go into a lot of um, specific a lot of details on the converter box. Basically, it senses if you're plugged into 120 volt power. If you're plugged into 120 volt power, it'll energize your 12 volt system with around 14 volts. And that is so your 12 volt battery will accept a charge. Now, newer, um, some newer RVs have a, a switch on the converter box where you can select, I'm using a lithium battery, which requires a little bit higher voltage. But some people have asked, can I keep my 12 volt battery for my 12 volt system and also have my 48 volt battery for the 120 volts? And then I can have my converter box charge my 12 volt battery. Battery. So in that scenario, I would def I would say no, don't do it. I'd say just remove your 12 volt battery completely. Actually, if you're even if you're running your converter box, you don't even need your 12 volt battery. In my RV, I can just disconnect my 12 volt battery, put a couple wire nuts on there, turn my converter box on, and all my 12 volt lights work, my fans, everything in my 12 volt system still works in my RV. But uh, that converter box uses a lot of power from your 48 volt battery. I wanna say it's like a constant draw of like 250 watts when the converter box is on and, and making that conversion. And that adds up a lot over time especially if you're in a cold area and you have your 12 volt furnace fan blowing all night long, it's making that conversion all night and it'll drain your 48 volt battery. Now, if you have a 48 volt battery and the 12 volt battery with your converter box on, try taking out your 12 volt battery, put that little efficient 48 volt to 12 volt um, step down converter and your battery will last way longer. So an electrician in my area mentioned that in his father's RV and it's made a lot of difference. And what you could do is you could get a cheap clamp beater, clamp it around your 12 volt battery, run your jacks up and down, your slide outs, see how much power you're using. It should be under 30 amps, most likely. So what I did is I just ran 10 gauge wire from my 48 volt to 12 volt step count down converter straight to the compartment where the battery is, and then um, hook into, chuck your 12 volt lead acid battery, just hook it, hook those two wires onto the battery terminals, and you're good to go. You, you're reusing all the uh, fuses that your RV has, and um, that's worked really good for me. So one thing more related to cost savings is if you want to have a really simple RV sys setup is just use a power station. This power station has a 30 amp RV plug and this can run my air conditioner and it ran my microwave for two minutes without tripping. Some of these power stations even have a 12 volt 30 amp RV plug. You can get rid of your lead acid batteries and just use that plug. They, they do cost more. Okay, and the last three items are the biggest items. So I had you guys asking about how am I grounding my system. Now, I don't have anything that protects against like lightning strikes with a grounding rod because I travel, I move my RV, and I don't put a grounding rod in. So I don't have anything that protects against like lightning, but as far as the uh, ground neutral connection or the ground neutral bond, if you look up uh, purpose of grounds or ground neutral bond uh, you can get some more information but it has to do with uh, safety and not getting shocked when you're touching your appliances and i was totally missing that connection so there needs to be a connection between ground and neutral somewhere in the system i think i'm probably just going to get one of those uh, ground neutral bonding plugs you can buy on amazon and plug that into one of my outlets but thank you for bringing that up
Okay, the next thing is, I think I bought the wrong inverter. Now this is the model of GrowWatt I installed in my RV. It's the 48ES model. It takes a PV voltage range of 120 volts to 250 volts. And in my experience, to really be efficient, you need at least like 180 volts for the charge controller to really be taking in energy well. So I thought it'd be fine because I was putting five solar panels in series on top of my RV. I thought they had pretty good bypass diodes. So if I got shading on one of the panels, I'd still be getting a lot of power. And really, it works really good as long as there's full sunny conditions and no shading. But when I go up into the mountains and I park by a tree, and I get a little bit of shading on one of the panels. It really shuts things down for me. So I wish I would have stuck with the original inverter I was thinking of getting, and that is the GrowWatt uh, 3000 LVM 48P model. And this inverter has a lower voltage operating range, 60 volts to 115 volts DC, with a max of 145 volts open circuit. That means I could have stuck like two panels in series, and then another two panels in series for a total of four panels. And I think I would have liked that better, having uh, four panels that operate better in shady conditions rather than six, five solar panels that don't really operate at all when, there's a, when I'm parked next to a tree. But if I knew I had good sunny conditions that I would never park next to trees, I think my second choice would be this inverter from EG4. It's uh, 3000 watt and it accepts 500 volts open circuit. But you do need to have the higher volt minimum voltage in order for this to work. Solar is 120 volts to 450 volts. But the 120 volts, you really want to be around 200, in my experience, for these to really work efficiently. So I hear this charge controller has really good tracking information for uh, power usage. But this is the one I installed on my system, and I really liked it. There's a lot of really good settings in here. Um, but this would be my third choice if I were to do it again. Still really good. Now, some people have also mentioned that I should try the MultiPlus 3000. Now, I like Victron stuff. Um, that one's specifically not on the list because it doesn't support 3000 watts of continuous power. It only supports 2400 watts of, of continuous power. And for an RV, that would mean I would have to, if I was running my air conditioner and I wanted to use the microwave, I'd have to turn the microwave, turn the air conditioner off, and then run the microwave. And uh, I want to be able to run at least two appliances in my RV. So that one is out because of the continuous power output. Okay, and the number one mistake I made with, with my RV, and I'm still kicking myself for this, is pulling it with a gooseneck adapter. So I use this gooseneck adapter on some of my trips. So this gooseneck adapter has a 15 inch lever arm to my whole fifth wheel hitch. And needless to say, my frame was not strong enough to handle the extra tension and it cracked. Right here, I had to get this re-welded and I'm still working through problems with this. I think I'm going, might have to scrap my trailer and get another trailer because it is not holding. I had this uh, re-welded in Mexico so I could get home. So I almost got stranded in Mexico because my, <clears throat> because my fifth wheel hitch almost ripped off my, the frame of my trailer. So that is the last time I'm using a gooseneck hitch. But I do like the affordability of the 48 volt system. If I were to have a 12 volt system, all of the components associated with the 12 volt system would need to be thicker. And so they're a lot more expensive. But just like if you buy uh, power tools, you get the, uh, the 48 volt drill, you get more power. Or you get the higher voltage lawnmower, electric lawnmower, you get more power. The 48 volt system, I've been really happy with the power I've been, been able to get. I can have my electric fridge on, my microwave on. After those are running, I can turn on my air conditioner at the same time. So that's pretty impressive in my opinion. So I bet, so I really like that. I am gonna cover how you can plug your RV into your house 
to save power on your electric bill, house electric bill. So I don't want to do that in this video, but I'm going to cover that in the next week, hopefully. As a reward for watching to the end of the video, I am giving away all these items. I was going to do it in a raffle, but I'm just not getting a lot of orders, and I'm trying to get rid of this stuff. So if you order from a non-Amazon um, source, like Signature Solar, Current Connected, Santan Solar, or another company, email me the order number, and um, I will send you one of these. If you use my affiliate, it'll help pay for some of the shipping, and I'm just gonna ship this straight to your house. Uh, that's a 500 watt, or a $500 solar panel. Some of those batteries are $500. Heated gloves, uh, heated jacket there, extra large. DC to DC converter. Um, yeah, let me know what you want with your order number, and I'll ship it to you if it's still available. But thank you for supporting the channel and using any affiliate links I have. But thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time.